Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got this question about developing coding confidence. I think this is a good one. Like we, we talk about this a lot. There's a lot of developers out there that are not confident with their code. In fact, I did this video on the imposter syndrome uh, that, that sort of talks about it, but I've done plenty of videos and now, you know, I've gotten plenty of emails from those of you out there that are not confident in their coding abilities. But what I hate the most is when it comes from a college student where the professor who hasn't probably ever written a real application in their life is making a student feel bad uh, it, because they're judging them with out ridiculous standards that, that don't actually even make sense. And that's sort of the case here. So I'll read you this email. It says, uh, Hi John, my name is uh, Caden. I am a student in the US studying software engineering. I have trouble developing what I can only describe as coding confidence. I just don't seem to be able to gain any confidence in the code I'm writing. The assignments I turn in tend to get about 80 to 90 percent pretty consistently and my code runs fine, but there's still that voice in the back of my head telling me that it doesn't look organized enough or I could find and implement more efficient algorithms, etc. There are a million and two things I could think of, trust me, the list goes on and it has not improved at all. I tend to code around two to four hours a night and I try to increase the amount of time I spend coding on weekends by an hour or two, but I make sure I'm coding for a decent amount of time every day at least, excluding days when I'm just too busy. I also work out daily, eat healthy, I have a job involved with talking to many people, don't have social skills, or don't have social skills, etc. I'm, I'm thinking does, doesn't have problems with social skills. Uh, I honestly don't have any confidence issues that are big enough to hurt me with other areas of my life, but this feels like a crucial issue for me to get handled because software is hopefully going to be a big part of my future. And I feel this can inhibit me in a very drastic way. So Canon also sent me a code sample and I looked at it and Canon, it looks great. I mean, you can't really do better than that. Here's the, my, I will give you a critique on it is that someone's told you to put in pre and post conditions and comments above every single function. So, I mean, you've, you've, from the scientific standpoint of the academic standpoint of writing good code, you have done it, my friend, but re realize that and again, I'm not saying don't do what your professor is asking for. You got to get the grade, but realize that in the real world, you've already, you, you have gone beyond what is necessary and, 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 and realize what attributes are important to focus on. So the most important thing is that you solve the problem and that you write code that is readable and understandable and maintainable. So don't focus on all these technical aspects. Don't worry about putting all these comments in the code. In fact, I am actually against putting comments in, in code. I'll, I'll do a video on that perhaps. I've definitely done a blog post on why you shouldn't comment your code. You can read that for sure. And I think I might even have a video on that. But anyway, the, the point is not to say that you shouldn't you know, necessarily ever comment your code. It's that your comments should not be stating obvious things. In fact, the way that you name your methods and variables, those should be indicating this, the, the functionality of the code. That's going to make it more readable and more clear. There, I'm going to give you two good books that are really going to help you with your coding confidence. Uh, and, and again, you're, you're already at a superior level, right? I'm looking, at your, I'm looking at your code and I can tell you you're already doing a good job. Most of you that are concerned about your code that, like this, at this level, uh, you are already doing fine. Don't worry about it. And it's going to come with experience. But I do want to give you two books that change the way that I code and really give me more coding confidence. One of them here is Code Complete, second edition by Steve McConnell. And great guy. I've actually emailed him back and forth a few times. Awesome book. Just awesome book. It talks about the software construction, the construction of code, naming variables, all these things. Uh, and then another book from uh, Bob Martin, uh, Uncle Bob. And this uh, book is Code uh, Code. Uh, Sorry, clean code. I said code complete already, but clean code. Uh, also, really good book and really talks about how to create good code, how to write good code. Has exercises and you can look through there. You can also look at at, at the code that you, know, you can look around on GitHub at some of the popular repositories. And, and you're not you're not always going to find the best code examples there, uh, but you can if you if you look for them. Uh, the, the the biggest thing is is the clarity, right? It is making sure that the code is clear and and, and it does what it's supposed to do. You're not going to have you know a lot of people try they they basically they 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 they, they want to be a perfectionist, right? And you you can't be a perfectionist. You know, gr great is the, or what is it? Is it's it's great is the enemy of good? <laughs> like you. you if it's good, 
that's fine and you move on. But if you're just like, it's called, it's called gold plating when you, when you sit there and you're just trying to, you know, it's never gonna, this is the nature of the work that you're doing. You just, you're gonna have to get comfortable with things being a little bit messy because they're always gonna be a little bit messy. It's never gonna be perfect. You know, you can solve a math equation and you can do it as efficiently as possible. You can say, you know, these five axioms, this creates this proof and that's the most efficient way and this is it. But that's not so in software development because there's multiple ways, there's always trade-offs, right? So you're never gonna write perfect code because there's always a set of trade-offs because sometimes when you make the code more efficient, you make it less readable. Sometimes when you make it more readable, you make it less efficient or, or let's say maintainable or you make it so that there's, if there's duplication in the code, that would make it more efficient but it would, it would make it less maintainable. There's so many different trade-offs that you're gonna have to, to make as a developer. So don't get hung up on this stuff. And this goes for all of you out there. Don't get hung up on all this little stuff. Read the good books, read the classics, read good code in order to become a better coder, but don't worry so much about getting everything perfect. It's not, and, and some of it's just gonna be style and a matter of taste. There's not gonna be perfect solutions to these problems. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't write bad code. Everyone knows what bad code is, but I'll tell you primarily, you know, working in this field for as long as I have over 15 years, working with developers all the time, I will tell you that the primary thing, as long as your code works, the next thing is gonna be that it's readable, it's understandable. And the better that you are at communicating and expressing the intent in the code itself and not having to rely on comments to do it, the better that code is because it's going to be more maintainable. You know, and, and that's, that's really, really the key focus. So focus on that, don't worry so much, and, and take what your professor says with a grain of salt. The, you know, I don't mean to knock professors, but a lot of professors don't actually, haven't actually coded in the real world. If they're putting, asking you to put pre and post conditions at the beginning of functions, they've, they, they're out of their mind because that, that, that does not happen in real software, in real software systems. It, I'd love, it's a pipe dream, right? It's, it's something that we'd say, oh, that would make it so much better, but it doesn't work that way. So anyway, hope that helps you and, uh, and good luck and don't, don't beat yourself up so much. You're, I mean, you're coding two to four hours a day, you, trust me, you'll be just fine. Just read a, f a few good books. You're doing the right thing, which is getting a lot of practice writing code and don't sweat over the getting things perfect so much. Just, just move on and, and expand and, you know, and, and read those books. All right, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Take care.